My name is Matthew Sadler. I am a graduate student with the Urban Teachers Program at the Johns Hopkins University School of Education, and I am presently pursuing a Master's of Science in Education with dual certification for secondary English, grades 7 through 12, and special education, grades K through 12. Ultimately, my goal as an educator is to form a nurturing classroom environment where students can take control of their literacy and grow to appreciate language and the power that it holds. Ideally, a classroom is a space where students are heard, a space where they have a social safety net in their teachers, and a space where they are held accountable for their learning. In my opinion, that's the trifecta of growth right there, one that my teacher, Miss Case, always had in our math class. Now, when Miss Case taught me Algebra 1 when I was in 7th and 8th grade, she must have been no older than 28 or 29. I recall that she was a full head shorter than me, which was absolutely hilarious to me as a young teenager. Despite her short stature, though, she had astronomical mental height. She was keenly organized. She had immense respect for her subjects and her students. She had an empathetic tone that always unraveled my anxious ball of nerves. And somehow, she had unparalleled, enviable enthusiasm at 8 o'clock in the morning. It's true, Miss Case was nuts for math. She cracked corny jokes all the time, and she pasted these goofy stickers onto our quizzes and our homework sheets. But she was more passionate about the learning process than anything else. She told me a story in seventh grade that really stuck with me. How in college, she would correct her exams with her professors after class, knowing full well that she would not receive any credit in return. Now that meant a lot to me. Knowing that she would correct a mistake she had made, not for the grade, but for the sake of learning. That's what was so inspirational. On a personal level, it's helpful to understand what kind of a math student I was to realize the full extent to, to which Miss Case impacted me. Math always seemed to come slower to me than it did my peers. Algebra was especially difficult. Like a broken pen, it never seemed to click. Whenever I struggled with a problem, I would become angry and ashamed, and these feelings would bleed into the classroom. But Miss Case, she was there for me. I distinctly remember the spring morning that I received a completed test back from her. I noticed the sticker and thought I did well, but the score indicated that I was well below passing. I broke down, started crying, and tucked my head into my hands. It was then that Miss Case came over to me. She worked to calm me down, she put her arm around me, and she never lost her patience. She never made me feel guilty for my emotions, but instead taught me to self-regulate taught me to focus on breathing and executive functioning coping mechanisms that I would carry with me for the rest of my life, even now in graduate school. What set Miss Case apart from any other teachers at the time was that she was able to balance strong empathy with copious amounts of logic. For example, she saw that I could handle one step at a time, but got overwhelmed when there were a bunch of moving parts with my math, so she helped me deconstruct math problems. But she didn't just give me a fish, she taught me how to fish. She developed special worksheets and directed me to online resources so that I could help regulate my own emotions and take control of my learning. She did all of this with a soft, warm, soothing tone that told me I could struggle in safety. Now what I hope to emulate in my classroom are the qualities that I've just explained. I won't be teaching math but each of Ms. Case's strengths and strategies can be applied to my classroom, my literature classroom. I want to be able to encourage my 10th graders to share their voices with me, to let me know what's going on in their worlds so I can best help them. Ideally, I want to emulate Ms. Case and the nurturing environment that she created, one where no student ever felt intimidated. And that's what's gonna be important, that every student in my lit classroom feel secure and willing to explore. It all begins with self-regulation. It all begins with habit forming. And that's what I want to help my students to do, to form the right habits. The novelist Marlon James once said, writers don't have a process. Writers have habits. If you set a routine, the music will show up. And how sweet that music will be for my 10th graders if they have an English teacher who cares for them as Miss Case cared for me.